Hey folks, I had said I was going to make a follow-up video here um, for the SRP775K one. It's interesting that I got so many views on it. I, it was just a throwaway video, so but I'm glad that people are enjoying it. Uh, so I said I'd come back in a week, and we'd see how the watch was settling in. Uh, I have, since I have it here though, let's talk about a few things, because some people have asked me, I've posted some pictures of this, People have asked me about this. I like to wear, I'm not a big fan of heavy bracelets. I'm not a big fan of wide bracelets. I pretty much think that the 18 millimeter vintage bracelets, H-Links are pretty much perfect for me, but bracelets are such a personal choice. I don't expect this to be for everybody else, but some people have asked me about it. So I thought I'd talk about it. This is a new old stock Chrysler bracelet. It's called a Chrysler Stellux. And Stellux made these for Seiko for their overseas market, their non-American market. Um, they're just, I like the proportions. They're also, the Stellux ones are a little heavier duty, and they're made a little better. I just, I like the way that they look. I like the way that they feel. What I had to do is, this is a set of 6309 end pieces that my business partner and friend Jonathan Koch produced before his death in June 2014. And I still have some left, so... I have, I picked up this vintage Chrysler Stellux bracelet. Uh, I fitted a set of end pieces to it with a set of custom, not custom, but a set of special spring bars that are thinner. They aren't fat bars, but they have the fat bar tips. So they're thinner overall, but they have the fat bar tips. So the whole package works together. I just think it's really nice. In my video, by the way, I also wanted to take a moment to give a shout out. In my video, I also showed off my SUN019 on this bracelet, uh, this strap, and people had asked me about this. What this strap is, this strap is the 22 millimeter new version of Seiko's waffle strap that Uncle Seiko, who is uh, my friend Larry, uh, he sells on um, on eBay's Uncle Seiko, but he, uh, I'm, I'm really actually incredibly proud of these. It's, it's awesome that he went ahead and made these. Uh, this, these were my idea because he was looking for some products to create. And I was like, well, hey, why don't you make a 22 millimeter waffle? Because no one's made one. And to his eternal credit, he went with it. He took the risk. He took the gamble. Uh, but I think they're great, actually. And as far as I understand, they're big sellers. And people wear them. And they're doing well for him. But I just wanted to show you. I, I mean, I wear and use two of them. This is this is my late, this is a late SUA 6309. That I have on one, and this, of course, is my SUN019, which is a 24 millimeter, but I put spacers in there to take up the extra room because, again, I really like a thinner strap versus a thicker strap. So, anyway, if you want something cool and unusual and classic all at the same time, you can get one of those 22 millimeter waffle strap, Uncle Seiko on eBay. Uh, so, anyway, let's this thing's wound up to power. I have no idea. I haven't done any adjustments. Let's see what the numbers look like on this one. I, I really am enjoying it, by the way. It's really pleasant. All the best things about the 6309 um, are here in terms of the ergonomics and the comfort of wearing it. It's a nice piece. You can see the, the side profile of... The only difference I can see really in the case, the side profile on this one is rounder. See, it's got more of a protrusion here versus on the 6309, it's smoother. In that case, I actually, I prefer the 6309. And of course I prefer the rotating ring on the 6309. But for a modern worry-free version, it's great. Okay, I'm gonna move us over to the time graph. Okay. So here we are, uh, we've got it on the time grapher, and we're going to see how it's behaving. Still have that beat air, a little bit. Of, I haven't adjusted this at all, by the way, not at all. <clears throat> so the numbers are definitely higher. It still has that beat air. Uh, we're getting a little bit of a loss, but it's settling in. I'm not, I'm not going to go and do 
crazy adjustments on a brand new watch. Uh, some people would want to do it, but I, I just don't see the point. There's more danger in opening a watch and adjusting it than there is in just letting it be and letting it run in. Um, I'm happy with it. I think the watch is fine. I really don't, you know, a watch shouldn't require more than a few days to run it most anyway. I would think just in terms of getting the lubricants running around, in terms of settling in for the wear of the movement, I've re never really thought of that as being a factor. The watch should be ready to go when it's bolted together, but that's my impression on it. I'm happy with the watch. It's a, I think it's a good purchase. Uh, I think my only regret is, of course, I couldn't wait to buy one. I think they're going to be made for decades, and I think that uh, the price is going to come way down. It's going to come down in the range of the, you know, the... SKXs, the 007s, and the SKX 173s, and that kind of stuff. You're going to be able to get it for a couple, for, for a lot less than what I paid for this. But I didn't pay terrible money. I bought this from Watches 88, and it was, whatever, 360 shipped. And I got it in three days by FedEx, and it was it was a nice pickup. Well, I think the only problem they're having is they keep running out of stock. But it's a, it's a good watch, and I'm happy with it. I'm happy with my setup. I think it's a, just a generally a good piece. And it's going to be a great keeper in place of wearing a regular 6309 because it's not going to be prey to the lower Arborport wear. And it's, you know, it's a usable living watch. It's not something that I have to worry about preserving the collectability of. I can just wear it, which is great. There's a lot to be said for that. Okay. It's a watch. Obviously, the number's pretty good. Good times. Okay, talk to you later.